geological dating. How in a modern geology we date fossils, rocks, how we know the ages in our geological time scale. Let's talk about that. In my previous video we talk about geological time scale. How first geologists come out with the time scale using the basics and concept of formal succession. Watch the video about geological record. However, as we learned from that video, geological time scale based on relative ages. So we know these deposits are older than this, but we don't have a particular age on it. How scientists figure it out. Today's Earth's age is generally accepted to be about 4.5 billion years. The first 4 billion years or so, known as the Precambrian, is divided in three eons Hadean, Archean, and Proterozoic. And although we have fossils appearing as back as 3.2 billion years ago, these remains are very rare. And it's only about 630 million years ago in Proterozoic Eon we start having visible fossils appearing in our deposits. Therefore, the more recent you are in time, the more precise dates you can find for particular deposits. How we come out of any dates going so back as uh, 100,000 years ago, million years ago, billions years ago. Usually on geological time scale, all the eons, eras, periods and epoch are divided, depends on the found fossils and found a change there. Each of the period or epoch was chosen by geologists using specific changes in the life on our planet. And then when we had the record throughout the whole the globe, throughout the whole the Earth, we refined those periods and we start putting the limits or brackets on those periods. However, still, historically, only recently we start having specific numbers for each of the period. If you look on the modern geological time scale, you see the limits or the brackets of the epoch are in millions of years. Of course, there will be plus minus mistake depending on dating technique you used or depending on where you are on the globe. However, how we come out with those numbers? All of this dating was done by radiometric dating. Radiometric dating started using during the last 1500 years, global wise, and it's revealed the true history and time of all the events on our planet, which we observe in the preserved record. As a physicist discovering through the last 100, 150 years, all elements on our Earth have protons, neutrons, electrons composing the atoms. However, we're discovering that not all atoms are stable. Some of the neutrons will be lost through the lifetime of these atoms. Therefore, we have a different isotopes of the same elements. We're considering those materials which have this unstable nucleus, which are tend to losing some of the nucleus, radioactive. What's happening that with time, some nucleus or a combination of two, three, four or more nucleus just separates from the atom, changing its atomic mass and changing its isotope. Therefore, through the life, many elements which you find on the planet, for example, uranium, with time have more atoms composing a flat within and eventually through long time of period, it's become lead dominating material. It's become lead. Thus, for example, some elements on our planet not existing anymore, we can only generate or calculate them in the lab, because through the lifetime of the Earth's history, they lost all the nucleus and they changed the composition and they become different elements. So how we use these properties of the all elements in the universe to dating our records, the dating geological record. Geologists using the decay rates to calculate the age of particular stone or fossil by knowing its decay constant or half-life. Thus, for example, the parental material, the original material or crystal in our case, will be dominated in uranium. Then knowing the half-life, how long it takes for this number of atoms to lose half of their nucleus, to create lead will be this time of the half-life. It is pretty stable value. So we know for particular atoms, for example, for carbon-14, it takes 5,730 years to lose half. Therefore, we can take the crystal 
will calculate the proportion of parental material you're looking at and daughter material which already decayed through the time and by seeing this proportion you can calculate how far through the half-life this bulk of material is. For example in geology we're using uranium or thorium decay into the lead for igneous volcanic rocks. By taking the crystals of igneous volcanic rocks, we can calculate the time this rock was formed into this specific form. So, for example, you take a crystal with a particular number of uranium. When it was formed, there was a specific temperature or it's cooled down, and all these uranium atoms were locked within the crystal. They were not leaving the crystal form anymore. Through the life on our planet, it started to decay. Number of the uranium atoms become lead. And now when you find the crystal, by knowing this proportion of original isotope, original element, and daughter product or stable, not losing neutrons isotopes, we can figure out when the crystal formed. Therefore, you can understand we can use it only for volcanic rocks or metamorphic rocks. And now when the crystals were actually forming, we cannot use this for dating sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks not producing new crystals which have these type of elements in them. So if I find the sedimentary rocks that dating the crystals in it, I will know the time when this crystal originally were formed. But I have no idea how long it took for this crystal to fall apart, remobilized by processes on the planet, and then deposited as a sedimentary rocks. With metamorphic rocks, we will trace in new elements in the rock and the crystal and date when metamorphism happened with this pre-existing igneous or sedimentary rock. Because the new elements will be formed and we can trace uranium or thorium elements there. With the sedimentary, geologists looking at organic composition within sedimentary rock. For example, old trunk of tree or remnants of the animals. Animals or organic components, they have carbon within them. And finding the decay of the carbon since the trunk of the tree or animal body died, we can know how long it been there within the sedimentary rock. And we know at least the minimum age when this sedimentary layer was formed. If you have river flood happening, it's entraining large tree trunk, trees stuck between the sediment, the new layers of the sediments falling on top of this remnants of the tree trunk, and we know when minimum age when it was deposited. However, the problem with carbon dating it doesn't go as far back, because the half-life only 5,700 years, we can calculate correctly the age of the deposits up to 20,000 years old, or we can stretch it out up to 50,000, but no more. Therefore, majority of all the deposits in geology dating by using igneous volcanic rocks, metamorphic rocks, uranium, lead, and thorium, lead, parental and daughter isotopes combinations. So how in geology we're reconstructing the whole time scale. If you look on a time scale, we have quite specific ages for particular periods, epochs. Geologists come out with principle of correlation to combine knowledge from different aspects of minimal ages, specific ages, dating the fossils, dating the deposits in volcanic ashes, to reconstruct specific ages of particular layers of deposits. We'll talk about that in the next video.